Well, hello, you fabulous interior design professional. It is so good to be here. I've been away on holidays. I know the shows keep coming. That's because we pre-recorded some of them. And uh, I had a wonderful time on the road. I did some biking in Spain. Business of Design celebrated its 20th birthday at High Point. And I was home one day and thick into a an installation for clients which we we just finished and uh ooh, that was a lot like to to um to have a great big long holiday and then a birthday party at high point and then race back for an installation and yeah i'm sort of feeling it and um and I will say this too. I'm really happy we're having this conversation today with Casey. Casey Chastain uh, specializes in um, enhancing market perceptions and helping business owners drive strategic growth. She is the founder of Chastain Consulting. And we had a conversation about the value of slowing down and making sure before you decide to add a service or lower your fees or, you know, change how you do business, you've done some assessment and you know that what you are proposing will actually get you to a place you want to be rather than just, you know, Winnie the Pooh style. I think I'll follow my nose and see where I end up, which can be fun when you're on a holiday, but not so fun when you're running a business. And I will say maybe it's the time of the year, like, you know, the holidays are on, a, on us, they're coming up soon. And I see 2025 looming. I'm 2025. That's insane. How did that happen? And I am feeling slightly, what is the word? Could it be bored? Am I bored a little with where I'm at in my business? Have I been complacent a little bit? I've been enjoying like amazing profitability. And we've been kind of hitting it out of the park in terms of making clients happy and selling product and getting those projects photographed and all that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking what's next. Yeah, that's it. I'm thinking what's next. So sometimes you want to think about growth and development when things are going great. And sometimes you must think about growth and development when things aren't going so well. It doesn't matter. Either one of those things, you want to be thinking about it. I, I'm sure that that is true. So we're going to talk to Casey. And before that, uh, before you get to meet Casey, you're going to hear from Cheryl Horn, find out what's going on at Business of Design, and all the information about Casey Chastain and her consulting firm in Australia is uh, at businessofdesign.com. And by the way, if you haven't purchased membership yet, if you haven't taken the courses and implemented all the steps that will allow you run your business, allow you to run your business and run your projects, you should do that right away because things are going to be changing in 2025. It's just a reality that we are going to make some big changes, exciting changes. Uh, we've been working on it for some time and um, I'm looking forward to it. But this would be a moment where you could get in on what is currently the most ridiculously underpriced learning in the industry. In fact, we just got an email from somebody who said, you know, I'm looking at business of design. You seem to have everything I need. And yet there are other people selling a fraction of what you're offering and they're asking thousands of dollars. And yeah, we know so many of those other people are former business of design members who have taken uh, our courses and implemented and found some value, which is great. And now they're passing it on for a lot, a lot of money. So uh, yeah, we're noticing, you're noticing. Now would be a really good time to jump into membership. I promise you won't be sorry. We can change your life. I know we can. Uh, Cheryl is going to give us some quick announcements and you're going to meet Casey. And I'm really glad to be back. Good to see you all or hear you all, anticipate hearing you all. Oh, be well. Thanks, Kimberly. Well, I really just want to build on that conversation about membership. Uh, we really do get comments like that all the time. I'm constantly answering the question, what's included in membership? Because the price point doesn't necessarily reflect 
um, the value that you receive, all of the programs, the monthly coaching uh, that you gain access to. Our goal has always been to reach as many designers as possible and transform the industry by streamlining businesses, making uh, this a profitable business to get into and having that expectation right from the you know, the start of your career, that this is a business that you can make a lot of money doing. And the reality is most designers who find business of design or another coaching program are finding it at a point in their career where uh, they're not currently profitable or they're spinning their wheels, they're working evenings and weekends, and they just don't have the bandwidth to take on learning despite how that would transform their, their business. So, um, you know, we are getting more and more comments uh, when we were at High Point, specifically um, having dinner with designers. A longtime member um, said to Kimberly and I, do you have any idea how much money I've made off you and how little I spent to do it? I trained my entire staff using my membership. Um, and we hear comments like that all, all the time we want to make this attainable for as many designers as possible. So if you are not currently a member, now is a great time to sign up. Um, uh, December has always been a busy month, uh, even more so than January um, in terms of uh, designers, uh, current members either spending more time in their membership or uh, you know new members signing up. Uh, this is the time plan for your year ahead. We want that to be your most profitable year uh, ever. Um, the courses are there for you to take. You have full access to all of our programs. Uh, it's two different learning streams. Uh, most designers, uh, I see a membership come through and I immediately see the BOD uh, 15 that they've uh, enrolled in and that's what they're starting with. Um, but we have a whole second stream on how to run your business that is invoicing and collecting from clients. It includes how to charge for your services and like what amounts, not just that you should be charging, um, but how to charge for your design fees Uh your procurement and project management. Uh, this is a multi-revenue stream business. You cannot be profitable from design fees alone. Um, and uh, when you're ready, uh, you know, understanding and learning about profit margin and how incremental changes can make a big difference in your business. So it is all there for you. Join us every single month for coaching. Uh, never get through a course with unanswered questions. That is what we were we are here for. Reach out to me anytime, Cheryl at businessofdesign.com, and we would love to see you within membership. Thanks so much. Casey, good to see you. This well, Hello. it's morning for you, but it's uh it's nighttime for me. Nice to see you. Yeah, you too. Lovely to meet you. We are just wrapping up a Monday, but you're already on Tuesday. Yes, we are already on Tuesday. So much, so much is done so far. We're still, you know, Monday goes very fast, but we're almost at the end of the year. So I, we've got oh, so much I, to do. I literally just so said quickly. the holidays are coming again. I, I can't again. How quickly, I can't believe how quickly it is. I know. Time's and slow. don't, don't you it's sometimes feel like I'm so, I feel sometimes like I'm so on the ball in my business but the holidays roll around and I act like, wait, what, what? No one told me when did this happen? <laughs> I know it's cause you're just inside the bubble when you're inside this vacuum and you're just focusing and it's like everything outside of that doesn't exist. And then you just go out and you're like, Oh wow. <laughs> Life <laughs> just moves so quickly. So yeah, that's nice. It's nice. It's nice. The holiday season's coming up. So I'm looking forward to it. I, yeah. Sure I, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it too. But we're not there yet, thank goodness, because I want to talk about something uh that you are expert in, and that is a growth strategy. So yeah. for many interior design professionals, they are really on a daily basis on the hamster wheel, just kind of trying to keep up with what they already have and like living in the status quo. But mm. for those who've maybe already completed business of design courses and you've implemented and your projects are running smoothly and your systems are firing, you probably are ready to start thinking about a growth 
strategy. Does that seem fair? Um, yeah, it does. It's it's an interesting market that we're in. I think strategies become more apparent in the last five years, like since COVID and we've got inflation. So there's a lot of competition out there, particularly in our industry. And it's it's where a lot of companies are figuring out their niche or what is their value proposition to the market. So it's either price. So do we drop our price to get in, to get those clients? So that's become more um, a way of thinking in the last five years where I think strategy is at the forefront of businesses' minds. And where I've been working with clients is to understand what their long-term and their short-term goals are and Mm -hmm. aligning their their business development activities and their marketing activities and really not isolating the the other areas in the business. And and that strategy needs to be transparent across those areas for it to be, um, I guess, to, to fully work. And I guess my specialty within that is trying to understand those short term goals and those long term goals and what success looks like to to those firms and it looks differently to everyone so it's nice to be able to it, it's real bite size like where do you see yourself where do you want to be and then you start bite sizing that down and go okay well what do you want to break even yes we just need to break even okay what's the gap what's the resource that we have that we can work with to achieve those short-term goals so when you start to bite size things it's it's a cheat it's it's very manageable So that's really what strategy is, isn't it? It's really thinking about what you can achieve in in a period of time and then test and measure. Okay, yeah, test and measure. (laughs) So let's talk about that. Um, Before we talk about that, though, what I want to ask is it sounds like you're saying that before we reach into our bag of tricks and pull out, I think I'll lower my fees, we should be thinking about short and long-term goals and whether or not that's consistent with a strategy that will get us to either of those two places, a short-term goal or a long-term goal. Because often that's a decision that's just a knee-jerk reaction. The last three people who phoned my office said I was too expensive. Obviously, I have to lower my rates, right? It's just like, boom, It's yeah. you don't even like think about what's going to happen because of that. You just do it. It's, it's, it's usually the first thing people think of is price. If I lower my price, I'll get everyone. But the problem is you start watering yourself down. And they're, the clients out there, they will pay when they have they see value. Mm. So it's, it's about that value proposition, proposition and how you put that out to the market, both in a marketing, which is your brand awareness, and then within your BD about client acquisition. So they work together. So you don't always have to lower your price. It's just one tool in terms of an abundance of, of, of strategy tools. Okay. So, so it's usually the first go-to because it's money. Everyone understands money. Mm. So it's, it's really going back and focusing what sets your business apart and then really honing in on that. Because if you can, if you can articulate that in your brand and you can articulate that on a one-to-one, you're, you, you're, that's half the battle because you're showing value in, in, in why they should be paying for you. So whether that is, you know, you specialize in a certain sector, you specialize in sustainability, you specialize in just a niche, you're small resi and you work with um, private clients and it's very client centric, for example, that is your niche and that is what you focus on. And, and that's where I think um, clients get a little lost is they, they get too far beyond. They're thinking, you know, cart before the horse and I want to be here. But to get there, we need to think about, well, what do we have? What do you really want to achieve? What time frame do you want to achieve it in? And, you know, what's your overall value as a business? And it goes back to that branding of what, what's your value, what's your mission? And that was all interwoven into the strategy as well. So it, to, there's a to- lot of pieces. Yeah. Okay. So just to follow your recommendation that we're going to take it in small bites, let's take it from the beginning. Where can we begin to assess when we're thinking it's, I need to develop a strategy, a strategy for growth. Where should I begin? 
So for most practices, there's usually there's there's a want to grow the business. Um, particularly with my experience with with clients, they've organically grown. So it's usually around 70 to 80 percent return business. So their their model's a relationship model. So that's how they that's how they think about how they grow the business is purely relationship. But the thought is how the first thing you need to think about is what are they what do you want to achieve in a period of time? So is it to break even? Are you wanting to get into a certain market? Are you wanting to add on a, a service? It, it's thinking about those offerings in the business to to set you apart in the market so it's it's just a bite-sized consideration what where do you see yourself in do all roads that lead to more money like regardless if you see yourself adding a service or like is if does every growth strategy involve turning better profit i suppose you're going to say well, you could be making considerable profit, but not enjoying your work-life balance. And so your growth strategy might be to eliminate you and make yourself redundant or so, but most designers aren't in that category. So, right? Well, it depends. That's that. That's a fair question because it depends on, that's why it goes back to what does success look like? So mm. what what are you trying to achieve? Is, is, is your success, I want to reduce my staff retention rate? Okay, so success looks like we reduce that um, retention rate for your, your staff by 10%. So we look backwards of how we map out well, why are they leaving? Mm. What, when, when were they leaving? What, what's, their client, what's their satisfaction within the business? So then you're looking at that in, in a vacuum and okay. that's what defines success for them. Whereas, you know, it does have a knock-on effect on the business revenue, does it not? When you think about these strategies, at the end of it, the objective is to, to bring in money. And everyone wants to make profit. Like everyone wants to make profit. They want their staff to be happy. They want their clients to be happy. And they want the best clients and they want to be doing the best work. Right. But to think that to achieve all of that, it's it's quite a lot. So so it does come back to money, but that's why I say, what are you trying to achieve right now in that strategy? Are you are you trying to reduce your class, um, your staff retention, or are you trying to reduce, increase your retention in clients? So then you look, we look into that as well, is understand, okay, well, why are your clients leaving? What sets you apart to your clients? You could do a client mapping journey, and I think that's very informative. That's another tool to understand what your clients want, and I think. That's a great way of looking out to understand what you need to change internally without putting your finger in the air and going, oh, well, I feel this and I feel that. And I, it's, don't live in the world of assumption. You can actually go out and test and measure and see what and change things based on evidence. Yeah. So that's, that's another way of um, these are these tools. And you've got, we've got so much technology now where you can measure these things. And that's the same with your, your, your CRMs. You can look at, what are your clients looking at? Where are they on the website? What are they looking at in terms of your emails? There is a lot of information you can understand about your clients and their journey through your brand that you can start to really take it on and go, well, this is what I'm focusing on. This is what needs improvement. And this is what I'm you know, going to attack in the next quarter or so on and so forth. Hey, did you know that 50% of interior design professionals aren't procuring at all for their clients. The reason? It's just too hard. But not with Daniel House Club. They make it easy. DHC simplifies your design business, offering everything you need in one place. No more wasting time managing orders. They've got it covered so you can concentrate on creating beautiful spaces. Plus, they offer some of the best trade pricing on top brands like Theodore Alexander, Jaipur Living, and Rove Concepts with flat rate shipping. To join, visit danielhouse.club and use the promo code BOD2024, all caps, for 50% off your first year of their Pro Plus membership. 
And for you longtime members of DHC, they want to reward you for your loyalty. Use the code PROFIT2024, all caps, at checkout to receive 10% off the value of your next order. Joining Daniel House Club is like Instacart for your interior design business. Experience how easy managing procurement for your clients can be. So when you're talking about a client mapping journey or you're talking about following the client experience from the first time they get in touch with you through the consultation, how did the project go? What happened at the end of the project? Did they feel that they got, yeah. And most of us, I would say, frequently when you're busy, those are the kinds of things you just sort of let slide. And then when it's slow, there's a panic. Now I need to know about their experience, right? So what yes. can so can we reach back to former clients and have these conversations? Have you ever done that? Have you had designers go backwards and talk to clients and say, yeah. you know, where did I lose you kind of thing? Or yeah, so I've worked with um I've worked with clients that are at a position within their their company where they are trying to pivot. And I always suggest that we do a form, we do a client mapping journey to understand what it is that the clients love about us, what do they where do they see improvement and what do they see that sets them apart in the market. And it's, it goes out for a few questionings. We align it around long-term, short-term girls, goals as well. So we're getting the right questions about what, what we want back. So whether or not it's, you know, what do you like about the website? How, how does our marketing collateral, um, is it easy to read? Um, what about our, our methodology on a project? What's our program like? Even all the way down to invoicing. Because right. that's the entire journey is the inception to you know, completion yeah. and the clients the- have dedicated feedback. Are they able to give like granular feedback or do we have to kind of give them some examples? Maybe like, was it easy you- to read? Did you understand what was owed? Like, so uh, this is where I think that this BD and marketing component come into the, the bigger ecosystem of a company. So marketing is, trying to understand, you know, it's, it's that brand perception and then that BD is one-to-one. So business is development. BD business development? Okay, sorry, I just want to make sure. Yeah. So, so that's that whole client acquisition where you're trying to understand um, what your clients need and want. So that goes back to your wider strategy is what, do you, what information are you trying to get out of your clients? So mm-hmm. then that would inform what systems you implement to capture that data. So it's you you structure it how you what information you would like. Mm-hmm. So yes, you have to go out to the client to ask particular questions. It's not something that's very um, you know, you just it's it's not something automatic. You have to, you really have to implement it based on what you're trying to extract out. Mm-hmm. But it's it's an inception and a, and and an end to projects as well. So the clients that I've worked with do have quite good systems in place when they onboard, you talk to the client about what they need, what's their scoping requirements, so on and so forth. But it's about how you hold that information. And then at the end of the project, what did it's asking the questions about from the client when they move in? What do you find? How did the, how did the project go? How, how is the team working with? And it's, it's that pulling out right at the end as well to give you this overarching picture of what it's like to be a client within your business. Mm. So you do have to actively put those systems in place to, to get that information out. But it is so invaluable for a practice to understand this information. It might be a bit of a, you know, a slog at the beginning, but it really, for you to understand what your clients are feeling is very important for you to understand how you pivot because it's all about client retention. Yeah. So if you can understand what your clients love about you and where they want you to improve, you don't, you wouldn't need to be going out and figuring out how to diversify. Where's a strategy to win? Like you, you have your clients, keep them. There's nothing more valuable than retaining clients. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's the same. You don't want to go out cold. You want to keep your clients. You want to stay yeah. warm all the time. And I would say, 
I'm going to speak for myself. We do a really good job of our client experience onboarding and beginning and even through the renovation build process. Where we fall apart is at the end of the project when it's all over six months later, a year later. I'm like, oh my gosh, I I haven't talked to her in two years. Like what? I mean, you know, we might send a holiday gift or something, but it somehow feels generic. Like, I think we do a terrible job of letting them know that they mattered in our lives yeah. and we'd love to work with them again. So it's yeah. not, I, I'm I'm going to guess that most people listening would probably say that's, it's more accurate. That's more accurate because we're on to the next job. I'm on to like oh, the shiny new exciting project that hasn't been photographed yet. Right. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. And I don't, I don't, I don't think it's an intentional thing. Yeah. It is, it's, it's, a, it's very, when, when it gets very busy, you just, you have completed the project and you've done, you know, it's probably a phenomenal job, but it's just going back to checking with that client to take that information in and then remap it into your, how you client management, your client management and go, we'll check back in with so-and-so in a year. And then you, and then suddenly you've got someone that you can check back in. How's it all going? And then there's a referral, a, a warm referral that you don't need. You're reducing client acquisition costs as well, which is a lot in a business when they want yeah. to be growing. You want to reduce client acquisition costs. So what's the first thing you do? You go and find all your relationships and try and figure out how you nurture them to get more business or referrals. Yeah. So it's... So it's it's exactly the nurturing is a very important part to to these strategies because in the industry it is very much based on referral and relationships. So yeah. if you manage, if you nurture your clients, that is a really important component. So then it comes through what systems are you using, what processes could you be working better with your clients, and then doing that on a very, you know, um, a check in every year on who's let's do a quick client survey out and see how everyone's going or let's do a report on our clients and then st- suddenly you're you're really internalized you're doing the strategy yourself because it's all client facing right so it's 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 quite it seems simple but like it's very much it is it is process driven but it all it all does filter down around what is it that the the, the practice is trying to achieve yeah. And and understanding that niche, and that and 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 companies do change their position in terms of what they're what they're going for. They add new service um, offerings, so you might just be an architectural practice, and then you add an interior service in there. So then it's understanding well, how does that interior surface um, service assist the the clients from the architectural side as well, and leveraging mm-hmm. those clients to show a value add. That's so it's. It's very much what a business is trying to do in terms of growth. And right. as, as you said before, it, it, it really depends on what the client is. Yeah, what, what growth looks like and success looks like for them, whether it's client retention, whether or not it's more, you know, they want more people following them on social media, they want more of a social media following. Yeah. It's all defined on, on what they're looking for in terms of growth. So another thing I think many designers reach for when they think about growth or I need to make more money, I need more presence, they'll think about adding a service. And I often hear people say, we want to add this service. And I'll say, why? And they're like, uh, I think it'd be great. Like that is not yeah. a strategy, right? That is not, that's yeah. nothing like a strategy. And in my experience, sometimes I've added things that's actually detracted from my main business and been a really big mistake I am like the queen of like I have an idea oh I implemented it like <laughs> I didn't give it any thought is this where is it going which one of my goals does this align with it just sounds super fun let's do it tomorrow yeah. um so again like when we're gonna if we're gonna if we're thinking that we need to grow what are some of the assessment milestones or keystones we need to think about like Put, put it in the simplest terms for somebody who says, I know I need to grow. I just don't know how to do that. So key areas, I think, when considering growth or, or a company pivoting, I would yeah. say is develop that clear value proposition. Okay, so, so what, what are you selling? Right. Sorry, there's such a delay. I'm so sorry. We're, we're not, I don't mean to interrupt you. What, what am I selling 
that the client really wants and needs and will think is great value? What do I have to offer this client that is different from the 29 million other interior design professionals in my neighborhood? How Have you heard strategies that are different? Have you heard exactly. actually really refined niche value propositions? And if you have, give us some examples of something that really seems honed. So, uh, so for example, I've worked with a client who decided to add a service, um, a value app, which was um, integrated to their offering, which is interior, an interior design service. And they'd been around for just under 30 years and they specialized in a certain sector. Um, but interiors, and it was very brutalistic. It was industrial. So mm -hmm. they needed to be up. And interiors is very soft. When people think of it, they think it's very soft, it's very personalized. Mm -hmm. So having to figure out how to, one, diversify sector and also uh, leverage the new service line as well. So to, the niche there is taking what they've done for 30-odd years and show value in why an interior service is of value to their current 25-year clients. Right. And it's... The, the strategy within that is simply talking to, well, they understand the industry. They've got great track record. They've got their way of thinking is very technical. So it, it falls back on their skill with in-house. So they're very technical in terms of their thinking and their clients as, all, as well. It's a, it's a one-stop shop, mm -hmm. and which, which also allows for price price to be quite competitive without going out and outsourcing as well mm. so there's two areas within that is that you've got re reduction in price because you're looking at a full service in-house service from you know urban design all the way to master planning all the way to interiors and then you've also got the track record of 25 years of experience and then you're adding that value out of interiors to their current market so that was their their niche of trying to to go out to the market with their design intelligence as, as what you would put it with their current, um, with their current clients. So it was looking within it's a, it was a relationship model, right? So there's nothing better than a relationship model. So their strategy was looking within their clients and how do they maintain their clients with that new value add? Right. And presumably and niche, their clients have asked for, interior design services. So they, I mean, that seems like an easy, that's low lying fruit in that case, right? Well, yeah, exactly right. It's, it's exactly, it's understanding that the market, you, you're val you're giving value to your clients, you're adding value to your, to your current um, clients. And it's also another revenue stream. Mm. So it's a, it, it's a win, win there with the understanding that you are managing what how much revenue needs to come in, but you're also looking at leveraging off your 25 years of, you know, work with your clients, which your retention rates 80%. They want interiors. So it's the client acquisition cost cost is minimal for interiors because you're leveraging that architectural client base. Mm -hmm. So that is, so that's that that strategy in itself is very strong. And I I truly believe within the industry that is something that clients really want to do but they find it hard to not silo architecture and interiors off architecture guys go out they win business but sometimes they forget about interiors to bring them bring them along for the for the discussion as well so it's making sure there's no siloing within that service offering and making sure that that there's that, that value add with the client we've also got you know an interiors offering that we can scope in as well this it's that discussion. You're bringing the client along for the journey about how they can service all of their needs. So it's so yeah. We that's an example in terms of clients that I've worked with. A, a very um, successful strategy is looking within and leveraging the clients that they've got with that value add, understanding that the clients were wanting that. Mm -hmm. And so, are you in so Sydney? Yeah, I'm in Sydney. Yes, I feel like we should know. We probably know who the designer, or who the architect slash designer is. Um, I feel like we know that. <laughs> oh, we do. You're you saying probably, yeah, you probably, you probably do. Probably would. Probably yeah. Would. But, um, 
one of our BOD it's a very clients. insular it's a very insular um industry everyone knows everyone so yeah I'm sure there you good. go but the bottom line is if no matter your no matter the reason for wanting to grow we do need to slow down long enough to figure out what it's what's in it for us money is nice but sometimes there are other things like not having to hire staff so frequently or not having to work so many hours, not having to take yeah. on projects that are outside of, a, you know, the range of places you want to travel. Like there's lots of reasons to dig into your current clients to try to see what you can grow within that. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. And I think it also goes back when you talk, when you round tabling a strategy it's it's very tailored so you're trying to understand what the business is trying to achieve but it also goes back to what what their value is what their mission is as well because if their values are you know we are sustainable um we we're very um we focus on um place we focus on um you know, core areas that they believe in and they go for clients that don't have those same values, mm. it waters the brand down as well. Yeah. So so you've got to really, un who you align yourself with is also a branding awareness. So you've got to, it, it, some clients have, you know, they're like, oh, we'll, we'll go with that client. They've got a lot of money and it's really good. It's a really good relationship. But is that what serves the long the long-term goals of the practice because if you're a if you if you focus and your values are on sustainability you wouldn't be going for a client that does not align with that they they're just purely building a site for you know yield and they just want to sell it and farm it off is that something you want to align yourself with right. so there's those are the things i do believe that do go through their minds but businesses need to function they need money so there is that that I think argument in their mind like what should I should I be doing that it's for money I can still do the work I want to do but is it self-serving in the end and you know there's there's a lot of clients there's a lot of businesses out there architectural firms or interior designers that have very much stayed true to their core and their values and they haven't pivoted and that has what sets them apart in the market mm. and that's a big that's a really important thing to know is that if you stay true to what you believe in you start to set your apart you set yourself apart in the market because you don't water yourself down you know that, that is everyone will know that that is you know yeah but that's that's what you you specialize in. You only niche yourself in, in that space, whether that is sustainability, that is a core, or you specialize, you know, I just work with residential or single dwellings and it's very personalized and that's your that's what you need to sell out. And that's why it goes back to those questions aligned with your brand and how you're and when you're winning business as well, is what you're going out to in terms of one to one. Yeah. What clients are you chasing? Because it needs to align with your brand mm -hmm. as well. And this so, sounds like a so, perfect. Going back to this. No, I was going to say yeah, this sorry. is a perfect time for you to tell us what you do, Casey. I'd love for you to describe to everybody what well, you do. So I've I, I've been working in this space for a long time now, and I love <laughs> working in interiors and architecture. I just I've never been able to. I could never be one. So I thought, why not help them be great? So what I specialize in is I look at two areas of business, which is those marketing and business development components and align them with the overall strategy of the business. So I go in, I talk to them about their, what success looks like and whether or not it's, we want to break even, we want to increase our our revenue in this service line in this sector diversification client retention we go in on those on that understanding and we start to build key pillars in terms of priority areas on what they should be focusing on mm -hmm. so if it is breaking even we look at their resource currently what are their challenges in-house what's what tech what technology or ai are they using to support 
And then it's we look at some figures in terms of, you know, um, overheads and how are, are they too high? How can we reduce that? So we look with what we can use and then how much do we have to spend? Right. And then we give, I guess, a tactical plan of the next idea six months to 12 months of what they should be looking at in terms of priorities. So you can walk away with a very clear roadmap of what a business, the business should be focusing on. Right. And I know a lot of these businesses spend so much time doing workshops, strategy workshops, and it costs them so much money. And then the strategy disappears. And we hope that it's kind of dispersed itself across all of the other business areas. So this is where I think it's really good. It doesn't take a long period of time. It's just distilling down what the business wants and yeah. really giving them a roadmap of how to achieve that and then going back and testing and measuring how it's going. Mm. I always think it's a really good idea to slow down and get some advice because I'm I'm terrible at um, the assessment. I always think everything is going great. We've got to keep doing it the way we're doing it. Let's add this other thing over here. And I haven't asked anybody if they even want that. So I think it's always is such a good idea to get, to get advice. Um, lots to think about. So thank you. Uh, we like to end every episode with something we call design intervention with just a great piece of business advice for the listeners. So I guess something that if I could leave anything, um, what I've learned in my years of experience is when, when implementing a strategy or talking about a strategy in the practice, it's, it's that transparency across um, the business, making sure everyone's part of that strategy and understanding how they contribute. Are they a small cog in a big engine? Yes, but as long as they know what they're contributing, it gives them purpose and it doesn't disconnect them. It doesn't feel like that endless hamster wheel. And I know what it's like being on that endless hamster wheel and feeling like I am a small cog. Um, but understanding how I fit in the bigger picture gives gives a lot of purpose. And, yeah, I think a businesses in, in the end will, will value that because their staff feel like they're valued in, in what they're, they're trying to achieve. So okay. transparency in, in what the, the overall objective of the company is very important, I think. Right. So get some buy-in from your team. Make sure that they, because yeah. I, I think they know, but maybe they don't know. So make sure, make sure it's really clear yeah. for them. Yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Well, it's we're awesome. like looking, we're looking down the tunnel at the end of another year with a new one coming up. It seems like a really good time to start thinking about your growth and your strategies and um, whether or not you're loving what you're doing or something needs to change. So thank you, Casey. Thanks for the really interesting ideas. And uh, everybody, if you want to get in touch with Casey, give us your website again, Casey. I gave it off the top of the show, but what is it? It's just Chastain Consulting. .au. .au. Okay, and that information is in the show notes as well. Thank you so much. Have a great Tuesday.